First thing you need to do is find the golden triangle on one of the corners of the Ryzen CPU. And that's because we want to match it to the triangle on the AM4 socket. So the next step is this retention bar. We want to release it from the side and pull it up like that. Right. Then we're going to take our CPU and hold it directly above the socket and it should just drop into place. Gravity should actually seat the CPU into the socket. I always double check by just kind of barely moving it and I can feel that it's totally seated. Then I'm gonna put the tension bar back into its place. There'll be a little bit of pressure. That's expected. And I'm gonna latch it just like that. The CPU is installed. Let's get to the cooler. All right, we are doing an AM port installation. Anything with the AM4 chipset, specifically I'm doing mine on a B450 Micro ATX. We'll need to grab the plastic back plate from the box. And just to get our orientation, we want to have the Intel lettering facing towards us. The next thing we want to do is we want to have these four pins close by. And we will also want to have these four plastic clips close by, so grab those from your box. So for starters, we want to be focused on these four legs. One, two, three, and four. So let's go ahead and grab the first pin and we want to slot it right through there. And if you kind of turn it over, you want to have it slot in just like that. So let's flip that back over. So now that we have the first pin where it should be, we want to grab our plastic clip and the plastic clip can only go in one way and we want to slide it on just like that. Now for starters, we don't want to worry about what slot this goes into. We'll get to that later. So we just need to go ahead and put all four pins in along with all four clips. Now that we've installed all four pins and all four clips, we want to make sure these pins are slotted correctly. So all you have to do is we want to take this side, for example, we want the pins farthest away from each other. So this is all the way over. This one is not, so I'm going to click it over there. Now those two are farthest away from each other. I'm going to go to this side right here. You can see this pin is slotted far away. This one's not, so I'm going to go ahead and just push it over there. So now the pins are slotted away from each other as far as they can, and this should fit the back of our motherboard. Now that the back plate is prepped, let's move on to the heat sink and prep that. All right, go ahead and locate these two brackets. And you'll also want to find these two little screws. And of course, we're going to need the heat sink. All right, well, we see that notch in the first bracket right here. So with the heat sink standing up just like that, we're just going to put the bracket right on top just like that. Oh, Buster. And then with your screwdriver, we're going to attach the first bracket. Do the exact same thing on the other side. And just like that, the heat sink is prepped. For me, I'm replacing the stock cooler that came with my Ryzen 5 3400G. Let's get to it. Alrighty, I've taken off my stock AMD cooler. And just remember that when you do do that, the back plate will fall off. So I suggest that you lay your tower on a table. And if you're building a brand new system, make sure you take off those clips shown right here. But make sure to save those two plastic clips and those four screws because you may need them in the future in case you decide to change coolers. All right, now it's time to grab the back plate that we prepped at the beginning of the video. So now I'm going to take that back plate. I'm going to go underneath the tower, underneath the motherboard. And just like at the beginning of the video, the pins are aligned properly and they fit right through those four holes. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these four standoffs. And with the first standoff, I'm just going to go ahead and screw in one corner. I'm going to do it nice and snug. I'm going to crisscross. Now I'm going to go to the top corner. 
and I'm going to do this for the remaining two corners. Next we want to grab this socket because now we want to tighten these standoffs just a little bit more. So just place it over the standoff like that and tighten it up nice and snug. You don't want to kill the motherboard. And as you're doing this, you want to crisscross. So I'm going to go to the upper left hand corner and do the same thing. Nice and snug, but not too tight. And I'm going to do it for the remaining two. And what's cool with the Hyper 212 that I just got at Best Buy today is that it comes with its own thermal paste. All right, let's go ahead and put some thermal paste on here. I'm gonna try and put that standard pea size drop. All right, now it is time to actually grab the heat sink. But first, if you bought this brand new, remember, to take off the warning sign on the bottom of the heat sink. You do not want to put that on. If this is the first time you've ever done this, this may be the most frustrating part of the process. So what we want to do is line up our four screws to mate into the four standoffs. So just gently go down and get as close as you can, just like that. Grab your trusty screwdriver and this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but you want to press down firmly and start screwing on the first screw. You want to give it pretty much sturdy force just to get that first thread in. Once you know you can feel it, you want to do about two or three turns. You want to keep steady pressure on top of the heat sink. And then I'm going to go to the opposite corner. You won't be able to see it on camera, but I'm going to do this and get this thread in two to three turns once I feel it. And then I'm just gonna rotate the corners just like this. So let me finish that up. And again, just do it nice and slow. Don't worry about over tightening the screws. They will bottom out. That took me approximately two minutes to secure the heat sink to the motherboard. Let's continue. Before we physically install the fan, I am installing two fans and what's pretty cool about is that the Hyper 212 that I bought today came with a fan splitter. So let's go ahead and get that installed really quickly. So I'm going to plug my fan splitter right there into the CPU fan header. It's located at the top of my motherboard. It may be located somewhere different on yours though. And now with the fan splitter installed, I am just going to route these cables towards the back of the case. And there we go, at the back of the case. All right, now it's time to install the fans. Last year when I installed the Hyper 212, I remember my fans, they came with these plastic clips, like the ones you see here. But it looks like in order to save a dollar or two, they did away with the plastic clips and they gave us these wire clips right here. And I already know it's gonna be a pain in the ass to put these on, but we're going to get through it, even if I have to do some fancy video editing. So let's just go. All right, let's go ahead and put the first fan on. But before we do that, you want to make sure that the fan is orientated correctly. You see the wire that's going to go to the CPU fan splitter towards the back. So you want to make sure that that is actually going towards the back and not towards the front like this, because it'll just be crazy cable management. So remember to do that. I'm going to put mine all the way down there so it's hidden really well. Next, let's try and tackle this wire clip. There it is right there. And it's going to go on the inside of these holes right there. Let's see if I can figure this out. I'm going to do one. Make sure that's clipped. And it looks like I'm going to kind of just hold it there while I get the other one. Yep, it's a pain in the ass. All right, it appears that I got it. There, I can feel it go right into the slits on the heat sink. The first fan is installed. 
All right, it's time to do the second fan. And what's cool is that the Hyper 212 I bought today came with an extra set of fan brackets. I just happen to have an extra black fan laying around from Corsair. I'm just gonna use that because black is black. So again, I'm gonna go through the same process with these wired clips. Hopefully no curse words will be said. And again, the second fan I'm installing is gonna be a pull fan. So it's actually gonna be pulling air. So I'm gonna install it just like this. So it's sucking air from the heat sink and exhausting towards the back of my case. And there it is. After it's haggling with it for about five or so minutes, I have both fans installed and let's go ahead and plug in the, the fans into the fan splitter in the back of the computer. All right, so here's the, the fan splitter that's coming from the motherboard. Here's the main fan right here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in to this brownish pink fan header. And then the secondary fan, I'm gonna plug into the other one. and you'll be able to control both fans in the BIOS. With a little bit of cable management, I believe we're good to go. Let's go ahead and fire the computer up and see if it works. All right, both fans are spinning. Everything looks good on this end. 